Hello, my name is James Breen, and I will be discussing the boundary conditions for the Late Triassic Climate Simulation using CESM 1.2. The Late Triassic was a time of uh, low faunal diversity and uh, was marked by one of the uh, five worst mass extinctions uh, in the geologic record. Possible triggers of the uh, mass extinction and the faunal decline at the end of the uh, Triassic are extreme outgassing events uh, from the emplacement of large igneous provinces and the eruption of flood basalts. It has likewise been theorized that uh, the onset of the Triassic-Jurassic mass extinction uh, was caused by a bolide impact about uh, 214 million years ago. At this time, you can see on the figure uh, one on the right that there was a uh, steady decline in genetic diversity since the bolide impact and outgassing since the late Norian. The model that I'm going to be uh, using to run my uh, simulation is the Community Earth Systems, or CESM, uh, version 1.2. CESM is a fully coupled dynamic model which is composed of uh, five component models. CESM uh, has an atmospheric, sea ice, land ice, land, and ocean component which exchange uh, fluxes through each other uh, through the uh, use of a central coupler uh, as seen in the diagram on the right. For my configuration of the model, I will be using a simplified uh, version of the ocean model uh, that is uh, uh, static and only resolved to the mixed layer depth and is supposed to represent a well-mixed ocean. The objectives for this study is to set up the boundary condition files to be used in a late Triassic simulation and uh, I'll be making the boundary condition files available uh, for future work uh, once I'm done. After the uh, initial setup is complete, I plan on running uh, sensitivity experiments uh, using uh, different levels of radi CO2 radiated forcings and uh, investigate uh, the mega monsoon circulation that's been theorized to exist for the late Triassic. The topography boundary conditions were based on work done by Dr. Scotis and the Paleo Map Project. The original topography files were taken from Dr. Scotis, and coastal smoothing was performed, as well as the widening of channels and the filling in of any inland lakes, which improve, will improve the model stability. As I am planning on running the model using the uh, slab oceanic model. Uh, there was no need to uh, smooth the bathymetry for this file, and, uh, and the smoothing of the topography was uh, not required. Late Triassic climate zones were prescribed through the interpolation of a CCSM4 simulation of the end Permian. Adjustments to the climate zones were performed based on lithological proxies as described in the Paleo Map Project by Dr. Scotis, as well as a late Triassic climate simulation using the HAD uh, Atmospheric 3 general, general circulation model uh, for the late Norian, uh, and completed by uh, Selwood and Valdez. As seen in Figure 4a, the late Triassic was a time of little climactic variability and uh, it had widespread aridity, in, especially in the mid-latitudes. As of right now, I've completed the paleo topography and the land surface maps. So for my future work, I'll be um, working on completing the soil color maps, the CO2 forcing files, the aerosol forcing uh, file as well, and I'll need to complete a river runoff model, and then I'll be able to uh, 
initialize uh, my experiments and uh, be able to run the model and, uh, and get my results.